This is McFly Angler. starts now. To start, you'll want a strong but sharp saltwater rated hook like these Gamagatsu SL11-3Hs. I'm using a size 6. Place the hook securely in your vise. For thread, I'm using Vivas 6 Ot in hot orange. The finer size thread here helps with not bulking up the head with thread wraps. Start your thread with a small space behind the eye of the hook. Then create a little thread bump like so. Now these can be tied with lead or brass dumbbells, but also bead chain which I'm using here. Cut two beads off of some medium bead chain. Tie your bead chain in perpendicular to the hook shank with some X wraps, ensuring there is about a bead length of space behind the eye of the hook. Make multiple tight X wraps, then make some under wraps to secure the eyes in tightly. Then bring your thread back to almost the bend of the hook, and then bring back up a short distance from the bead chain eyes. Now we will need some flash. I like this Mirage Flashaboo specifically, but any flash will do. I am using two pieces for a small accent, but I've seen people tie it with multiple strands of either Flashaboo or Crystal Flash. I find wetting the two strands helps keep them together. Tie in the flash so it sits on top of the hook shank, down to about halfway the hook shank. Then separate the two strands of flash and tie them down to the bend of the hook so they splay outward like so. Then bring your thread back to just behind the dumbbell eyes. Cut them to be about as long as the hook shank, maybe slightly shorter. Now for the ribbing of the fly. I am using this medium sized D-rib in a gold color. You can see the D-shape here. One side is flat while the other is rounded. Tie this in on the side of the hook with the flat side outward. Then tie down to the start of the tail and then come back up to just behind the bead chain eyes. I like to add some flash under the ribbing. While not necessary, I wanted to use the same color as the tail, but the only large size Mirage color flashaboo I had was this lateral scale, so it'll work. Clip off one strand, and then tie it in on the side of the hook down to the tail. Then come back up with your thread and go back down about halfway and back up again. Then go back down about a quarter of the way and back up once more to create a nice taper on the body. Now we will want to wrap the flash up the hook shank with touching wraps, keeping it as tight and even as possible. Capture the flash just under the bead chain with two wraps, and then pull it rearward and make two more wraps over it to keep it secure. Then clip off the waist. Now we will jump our thread in front of the bead chain to get it out of the way for our next step. We will now wrap the D-rib up the hook shank with touching wraps. Make the first couple wraps by hand and make them very tight. This will give you some control over where they are placed. Then you can use your rotary feature going counterclockwise up the hook shank until you reach the eyes. Once you reach the eyes, back off the thread until it is located just behind the eyes once again. Make a few wraps over the ribbing to secure it and clip off the waist. Now to ensure the ribbing won't move, I make a few X wraps under the eyes like so and over the ribbing tag end. End with your thread just in front of the bead chain eyes. And then turn your fly upside down for the next steps. Now we would need some orange calf tail. I've also seen this tied with red. Clip off a small pinch of fur from the tail. To prepare this fiber for tie-in, pinch the tip of the fur and then stroke out all the fuzzies and short fibers. Measure out this fur to extend out about as long as the tail. Transfer that measurement to your other hand and then cut the fur flush at that measurement. Here, I am spinning my thread counterclockwise to allow it to jump backwards towards my fingers during the tie-in. This will help grip the fiber better. Place the fiber slightly on one side of the hook like so, with the butt end sticking out into the eye slightly. As you can see, the wraps of thread will jump rearward and your fingers will guide it down to the fiber clump. Placing the fiber on the side of the hook allows the thread to rotate the fiber to the right spot, directly on top of the hook shank. 
After a couple wraps of thread, you can pull the fibers rearward very carefully to get them out of the hook eye. Then make multiple tight wraps to bind down the fiber and keep it secured on the hook. Now for some flash. I like using midge size gold crystal flash. The midge size is a bit finer and I like the look of it better personally. I choose three strands from the hank and wet them with my fingers to prepare for tie-in. Measure out the flash to extend about as long as the calf tail wing. Then tie it in directly on top of the shank, angling slightly away from you. Then pull the forward facing strands rearward and then tie them down so they're slightly angling towards you. This will place the flash on either side of the wing. Cut those strands to equal the same length as the other flash and then clean up the head section with a few wraps. Now you can whip finish your fly. To cement the head, I like Solarez Ultra Thin Resin. It comes with a paintbrush to easily apply, and it cures very hard. Push the wing upward, paint some resin on top of the thread wraps, and make sure some goes over the dumbbell eye wraps. Then cure it hard. Now turn the fly over and paint some more resin over the dumbbell eye wraps on the bottom, and then again on the top. Make sure you don't get any in the eye of the hook like I did. Now cure the resin with your UV light, and the fly is now finished. Just so you know, I get most of my fly tying materials from Dooley's Fly Fishing. They have a large selection of materials from all the top brands, and they keep their prices low. Best of all, they are offering all my subscribers a discount, so go to www.dooleysflyfishing.com and type in McFly15 at checkout for 15% off of your order. I will see you on the next video, now you go catch some fish.